I am making a cake to honor my sign, Cancer. I'm making a crab cake. <gasps> to make my crab cake, I baked one six inch and one nine inch round chocolate cake. So I used my template to cut the body out of my nine inch cake. You're gonna notice that I'm wearing a finger cut the entire time I make this cake and it's because while I was researching crabs, one bit me. <laughs> Yolanda, is that true? Okay, guys, okay, I did not get bitten by a crab. I slammed my finger in my screen door on the way out to my backyard. Oh, that sucks, yeah, that's painful. Now I'm gonna use the excess cake as well as my six inch round cake to carve the claws. Obviously, it's like this unwritten rule, but whenever I make crustacean cakes, I find that I make the claws really meaty. Like, I don't mess with crabs that don't work out. It's like the crab is jacked. The crab has been working out in quarantine. Once I'm happy with the shape of all of my parts, I layer the body into two layers. I didn't layer the claws because as meaty as they are, they're kind of not big enough. And I know in the end, this will make them hard to work with. It's time to simple syrup all of my cake. And once the syrup has soaked in, I'm going to fill the body portion with some Italian meringue butter cream. Now it is time to crumb coat and chill all the parts of my crab. For this, I've chosen to use chocolate ganache. I'm gonna place them in the fridge to chill, and once it's chilled, it's time for me to start to cover this crab. I'm covering each part individually, so I start by covering the body in some red fondant. I should mention, whenever you crumb coat a cake in ganache, it sometimes can really dry out on the surface, so before you cover your cakes with fondant, if you feel that your ganache is too dry, you can brush it with a little bit of water to make sure that your fondant sticks. And then when I move on to covering my claws, both back and front, I'm covering them one at a time and I'm also gonna flip them over onto a soft sponge and wrap that fondant completely around each part and trim away the excess. I actually feel like a traitor. I really should have, a crab should have been the first crustacean I caked because I am a Cancerian and I saved the best for last. After this, I'm not caking any crustaceans. If you had to choose between eating crab or lobster, what would you choose? That's hard. But I actually really love lobster. So now I've covered my body, the two muscular front claws, and the two back claws. It's time to move on and make the other parts in between. So before I do this, I want to mix some CMC or Tylose powder into my red fondant. I usually mix about a teaspoon per pound of fondant and then let it sit for a bit before I start to sculpt. This just makes your fondant a little bit tougher and more resistant, perfect for sculpting, because I want these things to keep their shape, but I don't want to go all the way to gum paste just because it dries out so fast. By the time I sculpt, it'll probably have an elephant skin and get too dry. This is the time when I get really vague about something that's hard to do. So you just sculpt all the other parts of a crab. I don't even know how I did it. You know what I mean? I have trouble articulating how you do this. I stared at many pictures. With cakes like this, um, there's a definite line where I feel that I cross, where I sort of leave cake decorating behind and I try to become an artist. I'm just using my mind, my eyes, my gut to try and sculpt something. It's also really important to know uh, what your point of view is and how you want it to look in the end. And I just made like the little, the three little legs on either side in between the claws and then those sort of sharper pointy ends of them. Then there's parts in between the big claws, even the really big claw, you know, like started from the bottom. That one part of the claw I made entirely out of fondant and then same with the back portion of the crab. So all the other parts you see, one by one, just sculpt them out of fondant and hold them up to the crab and make sure that they're symmetrical and they look good and that they're the appropriate size. What's your rising sign? Libra. Libra. But Cancer's the best one. <laughs> Who agrees? I like a shout out for Capricorns too, guys. I need some Capricorn love. Wait, what are you, Chengis? Libra. You're a Libra. Oh, I'm not caking scales, but lovely sign, really, lovely sign. <laughs> I wanna know what your signs are. Leave an emoji with your sign below or just write it below. 
Leos are about to blow up these comments because that's so Leo. So I can make this crab completely scary like the pictures I've Googled, but I don't really want to make a cake that scares me, right? So decide how far you want to go. If this is too far, you can go more on the cartoony side. And so long as you get the shape, people absolutely believe it's a crab and maybe you want to give it a really cute face. This is one of those things that takes so much time. Like I read my notes and I'm like, one sentence, that was six hours. It makes it sound so simple, but it's not. And even I like procrastinate and I have a lot of self doubt while I do this. I also wanted to begin to make like the face of the crab. I rolled a flat piece and I just kind of with my sculpting tool indented, you know, the withdrawn claws and just sort of what I saw in the picture. And I laid that piece on the front under the biggest part of the shell. Obviously I prefer when I make three dimensional objects to have a real life object, but I don't feel that way about crustaceans. You know, watermelon, crab, no. I, I'm, I'm gonna just dive deep and Google. Dive deep, see that? Cause that's oh, where crabs on, are. Yo. <laughs> see that? See what I did there? I also want to note that even though I covered the body of the crab as one, I rolled out another layer to put on top and trimmed it to fit just like the hard shell on top. Now it's time to add texture to this cake because texture is really what's going to set it apart from being fully cartoony. So I'm using different sculpting tools, pretty much anything I think that will help me in, in texturing this cake. I'm pinching the sides like around the body because I find a lot of the crabs that I looked up, they had very rough edges around their body. On the claws, I'm pinching with my tweezers. I'm pinching in between the claws to make them look like they could hurt you if they pinched you because that's what they're supposed to do. And then I'm also adding some spikes with more fondant. It can be hard to pinch fondant to a real point. So I just took little pieces of fondant and did that in my hands and then added it onto the claws. It's time to start painting this cake, much like my lobster cake. I'm gonna mix together a bunch of reds. I have a little bit of pink, I have a little bit of orange, I have gel colors, I have powdered color, cause I never really know what I'm looking for. So I just like to create a whole palette before I start painting. So technically I'm a Cancer Leo. However, I married a Leo and I'm here to tell you I'm not one. I'm a total Cancerian, okay? A crab will still bite a lion. The first thing I always like to do is give it one coat of paint, all the parts, one sort of base coat of paint, and then I go back and decide how to texture. So on the back of the body, I made some indents right at the center. You can darken those areas by stippling on some paint first, let that dry, and then go on with another coat. As I mentioned, the six little legs have a really rough texture. So what I decided to do is I had these tiny little red dragées. I put them into a sandwich baggie and with a mallet, I broke them up. And then after I painted my legs, I actually sprinkled these crushed dragées or nonpareils onto the legs. And then I painted over them. So now I have this sort of jagged, rough looking, but edible crab leg. When I was painting the face, the scary, this scary area, I also added white gel color to my paint because I noticed that most crabs do look different underneath than they do on top. So I added some white to my red. Even if you paint straight up white onto your red, it will start to blend and just become like a lighter red and a more opaque red. I also love using different blending techniques. So I had some dry brushes as well as the brushes I was painting with and a makeup sponge really goes a long way as well. So just try different techniques in order to create all the different textures that you see on a crab. This crab needs eyes. I'm just gonna create two tiny little tubes of red fondant and stick them sort of under that front shell and above that weird like facial part that I made. And then I'm gonna stick the dragées onto those tubes. And I even wanna paint over the dragées with a little bit of piping gel just to make them look shiny. I mean, this crab is fresh out of the water. I don't know if you know this already, but we launched How to Cake It Zodiac Sprinkles. That's right, 12 blends 
for all the astrological signs. If you want to get your own zodiac sprinkles, maybe you want to get your sun sign and your rising sign, you can get two and get the second one 50% off. Click the link in the description below. So some of the crabs I looked up actually had tiny little antennas. And so for this, I have these little things that they make for sugar flowers and you, you sort of weave them into your sugar flower to be the stamens. So I used two of those, I trimmed them, I pushed them in really carefully and then I painted them with some of my red paint. It's somewhere between cute and scary. We have all new Bake You Happy live tutorials available because maybe you don't really want to cake a crustacean as much as I do. But there's a lot of other things you could learn. Maybe you want to make unicorn s'mores or tie-dye mini cakes. We also have a four pack of cookie classes available. People are loving them. Check the link below. I've now caked both my astrological signs. What's the other one? In Chinese astrology, I'm a snake. Can't get enough cake? Check this out. If you know anything about Cancerians, we often like to live in our shell, but if you upset us, we will take out our big claws. <laughs>